and welcome to my video today. My name is Annette and today's video is going to be what I have learned in therapy so far. So I kind of just want to get into it, let you guys know because I know a lot of people are kind of like, what is therapy? What do you really learn? There's like some stigmas around it. You know, a lot of people have their opinions about it, but I just kind of wanted to bring my forth my opinion and how it's helped me and what I've learned so far by going to therapy for over a little over a year now. So I've been there in therapy for a little over a year. So I guess first I like to start off with how I got into therapy or what made me want to start therapy. So, you know, like we all have our things in our life that go on and we can feel that overwhelm and, you know, I'm, I think I kind of grew the awareness turning, I think, was I turning 24? Yeah. Um, when I was 24, um, that like, you know, I have certain things that, and like traumas that affect my life or certain patterns and cycles that affect my life. And I don't really know how to identify them. I don't know how to work through them. Like, I just felt a little bit lost on my own. And I was also in a relationship. I had just gotten into a relationship and, you know, I, <laughs> I keep saying, you know, um, <laughs> and, you know, um, I really wanted to show up in that relationship in the best way that I can. And I was really struggling a lot with things in my personal life, with my family and things, and they're weighing really heavy on me. And the last thing I wanted to do was you know, bleed on another person or put my burdens onto another person that is not, I feel like that's not your partner's thing to carry fully. Yes, partners are here to support you. They're here to be there for you. Um, they're here to love you through the ups and downs. But I do think as an adult, you know, I'm, I'm not a kid anymore. It is my job to work on myself and be the best person I can be so I can show up the best that I can for the people that I love. And I feel like that was my way to show how much I care and how much I love because I really wanted to be the best person I can be and, you know, for, for everyone and also myself. And I think I really struggled is specifically in romantic relationships because you know past hurts past traumas all this stuff and I didn't want to bring that into my current reality but yeah so that was kind of why I wanted to start therapy it was something I also was thinking of doing for a really long time but I I do feel like it's hard to take that step, to take that initiative. It can be scary at first. It can be intimidating. It can be uncomfortable. But I knew that I needed more support. I needed that space. And I wanted to take my that step to work on myself. So definitely you have to want to do therapy. You're going to you have to want to do that <laughs> for yourself and to just try it simply I didn't know how it was gonna go I didn't know if I was gonna like my therapist I literally prayed Lord do this I was like please let me like my therapist because if I have to look for a good one I'm gonna be so frustrated but so that was a little bit of the backstory anyways moving on um so how I came to finding a therapist is Luckily, thankfully, I have insurance through my, my dad still, um, so I was able to use my insurance to find a therapist through insurance, so it's a lot more affordable. So 
thankfully I'm thankful for that um, so I went through this site called Alma I just kept seeing it on my Instagram feed and I was like maybe it's a sign so what I really liked about that site that I found my therapist through was that it gave you so many options as to what kind of therapist you're looking for according to what resonates with you as a person and I think that's important because you kind of you want someone who can relate to you and just like that relatableness that's even a word so I think I picked like holistic I picked that they were LGBTQ friendly I picked that they were like spiritual and that they were certified in like a certain certain things I think it was like I kind of forgot what I picked but you kind of get my gist you get to pick like specifically what you're looking for and then you can also pick online or in person in your area and I personally picked in person and in my area I only drive like 15 20 minutes to my therapist which I really don't mind because personally me I need that like face-to-face -face. I don't like like zoom facetime like it, it doesn't feel personal enough i need to have someone in front of me i need to connect to them i need to feel them i need to feel out their energy i just feel like there's more of a connection there's more of a presence there's i i just feel like it works for me the best but some people really do like online because it's super easy to do and to access but yeah, so that's kind of how I got into it, and now I have a therapist, and thank God that I liked her, and that I I felt like, you know, I, I got along with my therapist. Um, so, I go to talk therapy, forgot to mention that, so it's, it's just talk therapy, and, you know... I do feel like people are like, what do you mean? You just go and talk um, to your therapist. Like, you can just talk to a friend. Or, like, some people say, like, I'm already aware. I already have this for myself. Blah, blah, blah. Like, things like that. Um, but I will say therapy, I will say I don't know if therapy is for everyone. What works for me not might not work for you. Also, you have to find the right therapist for you. That's another thing. And, oh, this was another point. It's also, just to preface, it's also a whole journey on developing that trust and vulnerability with someone. Because you don't know them. You know, you just go in and vent and get vulnerable. And it's uncomfortable at first. You don't really tell them everything or maybe you do but it takes time and it takes consistency just like everything you do in life you know like for example I'm a yoga teacher and when I first started doing yoga I'm just gonna say it like I kind of sucked you know but I really liked it so I kept going I kept trying I kept and it's been over like a year or over like maybe two years now and I'm barely starting to see like the difference in my practice, how much stronger I am, how much more stability and balance I have. And it's taken a long time because for some things it's consistency. It's, you know, you got to keep going. You got to keep trying. And I feel the same way about therapy. You're not going to go just one time to therapy uh, well, in my experience, you're not just going to go one time to therapy and be this whole person or learn all this stuff. Um, it takes time. It takes consistency. You got to keep going. You got to keep trying and putting in that effort. And, you know, from who I was and the understanding I had my, of myself when I first started is completely different than I do now. And it's just really helped me a lot to navigate through the challenges and the chaoses of life but okay let's get into what I've learned I just wanted to do a little that was like nine minutes of me talking damn anyways so what I've learned in therapy okay 
So one of the main things that I've learned is how to feel my emotions in my body, not just be analytical or logical about them. Uh, I think personally for me, a lot of times I, I can be aware of how I'm feeling, you know, or I, I, I go really up here. I don't really feel into my body, if that makes sense. I don't feel into my body. So let's say, for example, I'm talking to my therapist about something and she has me or she asks me, how does that feel in your body? What does that feel like? Like, you know, anxiety, it's like something coming up, right? Sometimes it's something in your stomach. Like your body tells you so much. And sometimes I feel like I don't pay attention to that. I don't pay attention to my body. I was never told to, or I never learned how to feel into my body, to feel into my emotions and really understand what was happening sometimes it just feels like an overwhelm like I'm literally getting sucked in by this like wave sometimes emotions can just feel like this overwhelm to the mind and to the body but I think therapy has really helped me pay attention to how it feels in my body and also not just analyzing my emotions not just being analytical about them or logical about them or just so like mental about them but actually feeling them feeling my emotions feeling the sadness how does it feel like how does this feel like in my body you know am i taking time to actually feel to actually just let that emotion pass through me and pass on and let it go or am I just so up here that I'm not letting myself feel I'm just letting myself think I had to change directions because of the sun um I guess the sun's kind of going down but yeah so a lot of times in therapy she's like how does that feel in your body so just being aware of that so that is something I've learned and that's something I've learned to do and to recognize because a lot of this so much of this goes back to childhood and how you were raised and how you were taught to process your emotions to feel your emotions to feel what you need to really actually understand what the emotion even is you know, am I sad? Am I angry? Am I upset? Am I feeling insecure? Am I triggered? Like, sometimes we don't even know what's going on. We just feel. So it's kind of learning how to actually feel and feel what you're feeling. <laughs> and like I said, a lot goes back to childhood. Like, in childhood, I was never really guided in that way to understand my feelings. I had them, but I I don't know if I, I don't feel like I was ever talked through them. If I was, I wasn't ever led to understand them further and really build that emotional intelligence. So now that I'm a, an adult, I have to learn and teach myself that emotional intelligence because, you know, we ain't kids anymore. We gotta learn what we didn't learn when we were younger. Uh, it's no one's fault or it's no one's job or we can't blame anyone. It's just our responsibility now. Okay, so the other one was develop more self-awareness, get to know myself better. So, you know, I feel like we all have some degree of self-awareness but I do feel like there are some things we are not aware of because we are constantly getting to know ourselves. We're constantly discovering ourselves. We're constantly seeing things about ourselves in a multitude of perspective through our experiences, through the lessons we learned, through the things we've gone through. So therapy has, through talking with someone who is a professional, who has studied this, 
and it has really helped me get to know myself better because there's just so many thoughts there's so many things and it sometimes it's just overwhelming and just kind of talking about it and bringing it down and really getting to know yourself through talking about things and seeing things from your perspective and also your therapist's perspective since they are the therapist they can see things from a different perspective than you so it's kind of having that other perspective to help see yourself more clearly and it's never been in like a critical or shameful way through therapy it's just very it just it's flowed for me and really becoming more self-aware and getting to know myself better and getting to know myself better has also come from the experiences that I've experienced in this time and being in therapy but through all those things I've had the support and kind of the guidance of someone else to be able to navigate through the hard things in life because sometimes for example I was in a relationship sometimes me and my partner would get into like fights, arguments, disagreements, or there would just be things going on in my life that were affecting them or vice versa. And being able to talk to some, cause sometimes I literally don't know what to do. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Am I in the right? I'm in the right. Like sometimes I have no idea. I'm just lost because I'm still trying to learn how to be a good partner I'm still learning the self-awareness of all these things so I would kind of just tell her the situation and everything and she would help guide me through that and through that you know I I could see the things that I need to work on the patterns the cycles so for example one is that I can tend to get defensive so now I have the awareness of like, oh, okay, this is kind of a pattern for me. I can get defensive. Another thing is um, I tend to shut down like completely. Like I won't talk to you. I won't say anything. And if I do talk to you, I'm going to say something I don't mean because so whenever I'm overwhelmed with emotions or I'm triggered, I just shut down because I have no idea what's going on. But then that leaves the partner you're with confused and wanting a response and that's not fair to your partner so I'm aware that that is a sign of something that comes up for me when I am overwhelmed with emotions so now I have an awareness of that pattern so that if I'm ever in another relationship again and that happens and that comes up I have a better idea of how to navigate it so that's another thing is um you know, noticing these emotions, noticing these triggers, noticing these patterns and these cycles, and knowing how to navigate it. Someone helping you navigate through them. So for example, like I said, how I would shut down and how also sometimes I would just leave. I would just be like, I'm overwhelmed, I'm gonna leave. And that's not healthy. <laughs> we shouldn't do those things, you know? But it's a pattern, it's like a cycle. It's how I protect myself, how I feel safe, how I learn to how I've learned to deal with these emotions but it's it's noticing it and making the choice to show up differently so one of them is when I am overwhelmed or I do feel those emotions it's communicating being like hey I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now can we talk about this later and I'll get back to you on that I'm just feeling really overwhelmed and I don't want to say the wrong thing can we meet up in like an hour so communicating that you need time giving like an amount of time so that they can like know when they're going to receive you again and then coming back to it and the more you practice uh the more you practice understanding how you're feeling and knowing how to express that to someone and really pinpointing what it actually is 
the quicker you'll be able to respond the less like you may shut down so everything is a practice everybody has their shortcomings, everybody has things they're working on, things they need to learn, their own cycles, their own patterns. But having like that safe space and having that awareness to work through them, learn and grow through them. So that's just kind of one of them. Mm. But yeah, just being able to find guidance and perspective for different situations. So that's one of the things and then you know, um, learning how to set boundaries. Because sometimes, like, I don't know how to set boundaries. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to, like, I don't know. Like, sometimes I don't know. I don't know how. So, also, that's, like, another thing. Like, someone helping me set boundaries. Someone giving me good ways or healthy, effective ways to communicate with people instead of, you know, getting defensive, shutting down, being passive aggressive, learning how to actually communicate with people how I'm feeling and then also understanding how I'm feeling. So uh, it's just getting more tools and learning more tools and someone helping you guide, guide you through different situations that you may not know how to navigate for yourself. So yeah, that's kind of a lot of what I've, I've learned in therapy and just, you know, something else I've learned is just, oh, I've learned a lot about just letting go, um, forgiveness. I've learned a lot about really truly accepting people for who they are and for where they're at and letting go of control. Because I think when it came to like my family, me working through things with my family in therapy, a lot of it was just accepting people for who they are and accepting that this is them this is the, and maybe I wanted things to be different <laughs> maybe I wanted someone to show up for me differently you know and they did it and that's just what it is so you kind of have to accept people for who they are like that's just that was like probably my biggest thing was accepting people for who they are and learning to that it's okay to put my self first and to honor myself and being okay with putting myself first because a huge thing that I also learned is you can't take care of anyone unless you take care of yourself so that is a huge thing that I learned and it's super true because sometimes if you don't if you don't do that you're just going to drown with everything and everyone if you're not putting yourself first it's just it's not going to be a cute situation So yeah that is kind of mostly what therapy has taught me and it's also taught me just kind of seeing how I, I've come into more realizations about how I love myself and how I need to love myself better. I think I can just be really hard on myself and I can have negative self-talk and it's something I didn't really notice before but it's something I'm aware another thing I'm aware more aware of now so when I notice it I can more easily be like to myself like no 
we can't talk to ourselves like that. We have to be more compassionate to ourselves. We have to be easier on ourselves. We have to be more loving to ourselves. And what are ways in where I can show up and love me for who I am and where I'm at? And through learning and through growing, how can I love myself through every single one of those stages? How can I be there for myself? How can I honor myself? How can I forgive myself? That was a huge thing for me. Is how can I forgive myself and and just let go and find like that peace and that like happiness every day. So it's just learning to love myself has been one of the hugest things I think for me is really learning how to love myself and to just be nicer to myself and just be patient and like they say the more you love yourself the more you learn to love yourself the more you'll the deeper you're able to love others and it's so true and for me right now I am learning and Every day I'm trying to love myself as much as I can and I'm really trying to nurture that inner child within me who maybe feels neglected by me sometimes, who doesn't feel like accepted, who wants to come out and play and who wants to be held and be like, it's okay, like you're enough, like that inner child wants to, wants all those things and you know, maybe a lot of us didn't get that when we were kids, but we are not a kid anymore. Like, we're adults now, so we, I need, as an adult, learn to give myself that now because I'm able to now. And, yeah, just nurture that inner self, that inner part of me, love her. And whenever I do feel like I'm down on myself or I'm being like super like, you know, sometimes I can get that way. I just remember like little me, little me being like, what are you doing? Like, it's okay. Like we made a mistake. People make mistakes. Let's learn, forgive, move on. Okay. <laughs> like it's not that deep girl. So I have to remember her in all situations. I have to remember her yeah, I have to remember her in all situations, like knowing my worth, having standards, having expectations, because I want that like inner child. I want that little girl to be seen. I want her to be heard. I want her to be accepted. I want her to be loved. And I can like navigate life to surround myself with people who can meet me and that inner child there. Because so, by loving myself, I, you know, show others how to love me. So it's just been like this huge journey and it's just a tool that has really helped me, which is therapy. Um, yeah, there's so many tools though. Meditation, yoga, breath work, nature, spirituality, being in touch with the higher power and the higher knowing, just knowing that everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to work out. We all go through seasons. We all go through winter, spring, summer, fall. Like, I feel like I'm like a tree. And there's the ebbs and then there's the flows. And you kind of just, I feel like I've gotten better at riding that wave you know, and there's always going to be a wave. It's just kind of part of life. There's like always waves. So just being able to navigate those waves better and to just like ride them and flow with them and not have so much resistance. But if you're watching this and if you made it to the end, I hope that you learned a little um, something from my experience with therapy uh, if you're considering therapy, I would say just try it. See how you feel. See how you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If <laughs> I don't know why I said that like that. If you don't like it, you don't like it. 
if you like it, great. But I would say don't knock it on the first try. Maybe your therapist, you just don't resonate with her. Maybe, you know, it's just the first time and you need to try it a few more times to really see, um, to really see how you like it. Like anything, you have to try it and you have to try it at least a few times. So, yes, um, I'll just leave you with a little message here. Uh, for anyone like going through anything, just know that things will get better, you will grow, you will learn, you will shed, you will be reborn time and time again. Life is a constant process and it is a whole entire journey. Don't feel like you need to be completely healed to be worthy or to be loved because that is not true at all. I think it's really just embracing yourself at all stages and taking what you've learned and putting it into your present and also just learning more and constantly just loving yourself more and more every day and embracing life and all its ups and downs and yeah healing is not a destination it is a life long journey so you just gotta be here for the ride make the effort lead with good intentions and you'll be good <laughs> well thank you for watching have an amazing rest of your day month week year